Awesome. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bible study here at All Saints Lutheran Church. Uh, we're doing Bible study for the 11th, the 11th <laughs> Sunday after Pentecost, August mm -hmm. 8th, 2021. Uh, and we've got some fun texts. We're in the midst of bread, bread, bread in our gospel texts and pulling out some uh, really fun things from the uh, Hebrew scriptures in, our, in terms of cool old stories that make mm -hmm. you think. And so... I like it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Pastor Rebecca is preaching this week. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Uh, I hope it's fun. None of the rest of us are prepping anything, so it should be great. We could do what the Quakers do and just sit there in silence until somebody feels inspired. It's really interesting. Would you like me to read the introduction now and we'll do the I would love that. The <laughs> Take it away. Uh, the introduction. Jesus says that the bread he gives for the life of the world is his flesh, and whoever eats this bread has eternal life now and will be raised on the last day. In 1 Kings, we're reminded that on our worst day, God is still with us, perhaps more powerfully then than ever before. We live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Our purpose in life is giving ourselves for others as Jesus did for us. Us. Us, the introduction. Nice. Yeah. And the texts are 1 Kings 19, 4 through 8, which I have extended to 4 through 18. Does this and, is No. <laughs> I also changed the introduction a little bit, as you know. I haven't fixed the sermon yet, but if I did, I think I might call it something like a continuation of the story. Uh, the best part comes just a few verses after verse 8. I don't want to leave it there. Psalm 34 that uh, Jules will read and is fantastic. And then John 6, which connects with everything else we're doing. Kind of remarkable and lots of fun. Elijah. I like Elijah. I hope you guys like Elijah. Um, and Elijah's receiving of the miracle of bread works very well with this series of bread gospel texts. And Elijah's complaint works very well with the people's complaint. But it's God's response to Elijah's despair that I think is the most telling and remarkable part of this entire, <laughs> this entire series. Um, so we need to tell more of Elijah's story because really it fits in with our stories today. If anybody has noticed just a tiny bit of despair floating around our world this day, Elijah, Elijah met it. So, but I get to set the context and this is really fun. Elijah story comes at the end of 1 Kings and the beginning of 2 Kings. And those are such artificial divisions in this particular grouping of stories. These are really good. I mean, here you get the story of Israel from about 900 BCE to 500 BCE. The first part is the introduction in the United Kingdom. And then the second part has to do with the divided kingdom, mostly Israel, and why they really blew it. And then the third part is about the divided kingdom, Judah, why they blew it, two exiles, and by the end, we've basically got nothing. So it's a good bit. Um, if you want it, oh, and you know what? There's three other books in there that we don't have, except King says... There was the book of the Acts of Solomon, the book of the Annals of the Kings of Judah, and the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. Don't look for them. They're not there. But um, first and second, the kings pulled them all in. And things that happened historically are there. Things that the Egyptians and the Assyrians and the Babylonians wrote about match very closely in some of the writings in first and second kings. And this is really good if you love cuneiform. So, and I love cuneiform. But it's a historical masterpiece, but the point is not history at all. The point is God and God's mighty works through the supporting cast. And we are the supporting cast. And these words work really well. Yes. Did you have a question? Comment? No, I think it's... I don't know why I got there. Sorry. You got cut off. We have to try a different microphone or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, 
Da -da -dun. All right. technology. Now I think it's better. I think it's important for people to know what cuneiform is because it's maybe not a word that everybody knows. Um, and it's really? an extremely ancient, one of the first writings. So maybe you can. History begins with Sumer. The very first human writings began in Sumer. That's over there by um, Assyria and Babylon by present day Iraq and Iran between the great rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates, scratches on stone, cuneiform. And when it was discovered, you started this, Jules, when it was discovered, the first pieces of cuneiform and the first couple people who read through it, Edward Banks in particular, saw the story of Genesis and the flood and went nuts. And there was a piece kind of like this with a piece missing among thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces reading about the flood um, 2,000 years ago before the flood story could have been written. So he flew back to Nineveh and found the missing broken piece. And cuneiform became very popular, but that was about 100 plus years ago. Um, many of the biblical stories are echoed in here and it's phenomenal. And Elijah is one of those phenomenal people that we don't hear about much. He was a powerful prophet. He just kind of arrives on the scene He's from Tishbe, that's east of the Jordan. We know nothing about it, can't find it. And the first thing he does is get in the face of Ahab, king of Israel, and says, by the way, God told me to tell you, you're not going to have any more rain. And that's because Ahab had married Jezebel. Jezebel was a Sidonian. Jezebel worshipped Baal, the god of rain. And if you're an Israelite and you're not getting enough rain, and rain equals more crops, and more crops equal more wealth. So Baal is the god of water and wealth. Why not just have a little Baal statue tucked in? And there were some very bad things that went along with worshiping Baal, but that's another story for another time. There was no rain. And then Elijah did some marvelous things that I'll tell you about in the middle. But he ran away because he killed the prophets of Baal. Jezebel threatened to kill him. He ran, and this is the story. But Elijah himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. And he lay down under the broom tree and went to sleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and nights to Horeb, the mount of God, at that place, he came to a cave and spent his night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, your God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I alone am left, and they're seeking my life to take it away. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting the mountains and breaking rocks and pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they're seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu as king over Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha 
son of Shaphat, of Abel Maholala, as a prophet in your place. Whoever escaped from the sword of Haziel, Jehu shall kill. Whoever escaped from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed down to Baal. My commentary was written by Chong Leong Xiao, who was one of my Hebrew professors, remarkable man. And he points out a number of fun Hebrew words. That one that says enough, it's only the word rob, meaning enough. And the NRSV is fine. It is enough. But really, Elijah's saying, I've had enough, enough. And the coal that the hot cake, hot coals, the cake is baked on. That word appears only twice in the Hebrew Testament. The other time, it's the coal that touches Isaiah's mouth. There are so many odd echoes going on in this thing. But look at Elijah. He's done miracles. He brought a child back to life. He stopped the rain. He faced Ahab down. He contended with the prophets of Baal when the Lord said he would send rain back. And they built these great altars, two altars, one for the prophets of Baal on the top of Mount Carmel, one for the Lord, Israel's God, though they seem to have forgotten that. And the prophets of Baal danced around the altar and they beat themselves and they cut themselves and they danced and they sang. And Elijah said, what's the matter? Has Baal gone to sleep? Maybe he's relieving himself. They danced and beat themselves till they collapsed exhausted and Elijah went over to his fire, had them pour some water on it and said, fire come down from heaven and the fire did. And then he had the people gather up all the prophets and he dispatched them. And then he told Ahab rain was coming to get back to the palace before he got stuck in the mud. Ahab went, told Jezebel, Jezebel told Ahab who must have told Elijah that she would do to Elijah what he'd done to her prophets. And Elijah ran away. And that's where our story starts. Did you notice that after those incredible displays of God's power, the food, the earthquake, the fire and the wind, the sound of sheer silence, Elijah is back where he was to begin with. All he can see anymore is himself. I alone am left. They're seeking my life to take it away. He's so wrapped up in despair. He cannot see beyond himself. And then God gives him instructions. God has already miraculously provided power and food and rest. Now God gives him a mission. Go anoint the kings. God gives him a companion. Someone to work with him and to share the load. And God gives him a new insight. Oh, incidentally, Elijah, there are 7,000 who have not bowed their knee to Baal. So from hopelessness and despair, God gives Elijah a way to go on. And his mission gets even more phenomenal as the books go on. And yes, that is another story for another time. But it's a glorious text. Um, I recommend it. Just do chapter two of Second Kings. <laughs> That's great. Elijah's great. Um, I was listening to a podcast with uh, Krista Tippett on being, and she was interviewing Abby Wambach, who is like the most all scoring uh, soccer player in the entire world. Yeah. And yeah. her wife, Glennon Doyle, mm -hmm. and their daughter's out playing on the pitch and she falls down and Glennon stands up and she goes, honey, honey, don't despair. Get up. And, and Abby looks at Glennon and says, this isn't a poetry fest. <laughs> you can do it, get up kid. Mm -hmm. Get up kid, all right. Psalm 34. Thank you. One through eight. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And the text reads from uh, the Psalter, I believe we got this from. 
I will bless the Lord all at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I like that. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right. So this is uh, classified, I understand, as an individual hymn of thanksgiving. Hmm. And there are 15 individual hymns of thanksgiving that occur in the book of Psalms. Um, and they basically talk about being delivered from life-threatening situations like dangers, enemies, illness, etc. cetera. Uh, there's a lot of history on that. And we could go back to 1 Samuel chapter 21, 10 through 15. Uh, that's the superscription. Um, but I don't want to get into that because you got a lot of history just from Elijah. What I would like to mention about this particular uh, psalm is that it is also an alphabetic acrostic. And our Hebrew scholar would tell you that it would be from A to Z or Olaf to Tav. Yeah. Right? All of, yeah, exactly. Thank you. And yes, you're also <laughs> noticing that. Okay. Oh, are, yeah, you're digging into the actual, actual yeah. Hebrew, aren't you? I'm looking at it, but yeah, I, yeah. part okay. of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is an individual psalm of thanksgiving of David, sung on the occasion of the deliverance of his very life by God. Um, this, I believe, has also been used on All Saints Day. <laughs> In addition to this particular week, um, I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord, verses one and two. So blessing and praising God are common. Um, and I, I did a little word study here. The word uh, bless comes from that same Hebrew word, knee. Thus to bless is literally to bend the knee, to kneel before the sovereign. Um, and then there's also words praise and boast that come from that same Hebrew word, the word that occurs in the phrase hallelujah, uh, <laughs> and thus praise will be in the mouth of the psalmist. The psalmist inmost being here is translated as soul, and it finds its praise or boasts in the Lord, which I thought was just kind of cool. I love that idea of to bend the knee is to, to receive that blessing and... <laughs> I think that's pretty. Uh, the psalm singer then states the reasons for offering praises to God. I sought the Lord, and the Lord answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Now, wouldn't that be lovely? Um, but it's right in Scripture. So, if if one were fearful, maybe perhaps if we seek God, maybe some of our fears will move away from us. Uh, and then verse six is this poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. Um, all right. So now, Rebecca, God delivers, not Saul. And God saves. Yashaha. Does that sound right? Well, it does. Okay. So these Yashaha two verbs, mm -hmm. these two verbs are similar in meaning, but carry little bit different nuances. So according to the commentary that I read in preparation for this, Natsal suggests a snatching away or pulling away. Uh, thus we might picture God plucking out the psalmist out of the midst of fears. Like, like whoop, you're fearful right now, I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to move you over to this safe place. Which I, I kind of just like that. And then Yesha'a means to take full care of or to help. 
suggesting that God like can crash in and be in the midst of that trouble and and you're not going to be left alone. And then our response is to give praise, right? And then finally, um, I, I just love this section. Uh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. This is often one of the things that we say uh, right before we celebrate the sacrament at All Saints. We mm -hmm. say, taste and see that God is good. Uh, and it's right out of scripture. And then again, happy are those who take refuge in him. Mm -hmm. uh, so the word taste literally means to try something by experiencing it. Mm. I think about that within the context of uh, what Pastor Tanner says over and over again uh, about the walk and the talk. Do it again. What, what do I say, Jules? My <laughs> uh, talk talks, my walk talks, but my walk talks louder than my talk talks. This is a hard good to make sure it's like, it's like you pay attention to me when I preach. <laughs> Was that pretty close? That was it. That was what I said. Oh, awesome. I couldn't hear it because my, my window's open and it, it's a noisy thing that just went by. Um, okay. So I love that idea of like, like try it, do it, experience it fully. And then uh, this word, <clears throat> oh, taste and see that God is good. So I was thinking about that, like, oh, taste and see Mm -hmm. good Yahweh is blessed is the man who trusts you know that's like from the interlinear Hebrew so you read <laughs> different backwards and that my question was around this word um, blessed because I think it's you know like blessed what does that mean it, there's different words that you can translate uh, for that word but it's it's Ashrei. Ashrei. Mm -hmm. Ashrei. Okay. I didn't see an H in there. So uh, it's just the shin. Uh, so it's a shin sound anyway. It's not there, but it, Ashrei is a shin sound, uh, SH sound. Ashrei. Mm -hmm. Ashrei. Yeah. Um, I just really thought the word was cool because it shows up like a, lot. a few times. <laughs> Quite a few times in Psalms uh, as I weave through here, but it's like how blessed. Um, it's not just, it's not just not happy. It's not, yay, happy, but it's like blessed. And I, I, that is a very different word than like happy are those. Blessed are those. <laughs> hey. Blessed are those who have dogs that walk by the path so that my dogs can bark at them and let them know they're not alone. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is what I would take out of this psalm is like, what does it mean to fully experience that goodness and grace? What does it mean to bend the knee and, and be blessed and really recognize that, that maybe there is a time in your life where you want to be plucked up and moved over to a place away from fear. and Maybe God embodies that and, and um, reminds us again and again that we're not alone. So that's kind of where I would, if I was preaching on this, I would talk about what does it mean to fully experience uh, the goodness and, and blessed. That's like right above Pastor Tanner said, bless. <laughs> Let's do more blessing, less cursing, which I'm getting better at. Nice. All right. I like it. Okay. And thank you, Jules, for bringing up the distinction between Barach, blessed, and Ashrei, Happy, blessed, heaven only knows how to translate that thing. But yeah, yeah and you're right. Barak is that goofy word that could be translated as a curse or a blessing, depending on the context of, again, your little frog context. Yeah. But sometimes I think they live in the same space. Like we don't always have to re just be one or, you know, oftentimes one works out from the other one. Baruch Atah is, you know, the beginning of almost every Hebrew prayer. Blessed are you. Baruch Adonai. Atah. Adonai, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Baruch Adonai. Baruch Atah Adonai. Blessed uh, are you. Baruch Atah Adonai. Forgive me. Sorry. But no Ashrei. And yet Ashrei has a similar meaning. 
It does, but it doesn't just mean happy. <laughs> no. No. Hebrew like, all Hebrew, like all Hebrew words, it's a lot deeper. <laughs> you, could, you could do like a cannonball into that word. Mm. Uh, all right, that's I all I keep got. talking. I'll yeah. stop. Cool. Oh, yeah. Thanks, all. All right, I have the gospel, which is John chapter 6, uh, verse 35. And then a bunch to 41 through 51. Mm -hmm. um, verse 35 will sound familiar, probably, because it was the last verse from the text for last week. So um, this also picks up right on the end of the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus talking about bread. So uh, verse 35, John chapter 6, Jesus said to the crowds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now to 41. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say now, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Um, so some of you may or may not be aware of this, but like we don't actually talk about Bible study before Bible study outside of, hey, uh, you do this reading. Um, so it's sometimes really fascinating to me that when we all come together for Bible study, like it, our random thoughts echo one another really well. <laughs> so, so just like you got random word studies in the first two lessons today, you're going to get a random word study from the Greek too. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Um, so my, uh, my favorite word in this text is from uh, verse 44. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. And the word is drawn. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the Greek, the word is elkuse, okay? Elkuse, it's, it's E-L-K-U-S-E-H, right? But in Greek, okay? Um, and it is translated here by the lovely NRSV and other translations as drawn, drawn by the Father, right? That God is like, ah, bringing you in, like, oh, this is great, like tempting you with cake and wonderful things, right? The word actually... Uh, means drag like like violently drag like any any other time that this is this word is used in greek it is uh most often utilized when talking about fishermen hauling their boats down from the shore and into the lake right mm -hmm. so you build a brand new boat it's up on the shore and then you get a big group of guys together with big ropes and you slap this thing down off the shore, and you, you lug it, you haul it, right? You tow it down into the water, right? That, that's the word that's being used here. This, like, forceful uh, drag. Okay? Lame is the rob. Yeah. Yes. It, I just watched that the other day. It's like that. It's the opening yeah. thing <laughs> from Lame is. That's what it is. It's, it's all, these, all these guys, pull, 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 right? That's what it is. Um... God, and, and the whole idea here is that God is doing the work, right? That God is working on our behalf so that we can uh, come to know the Messiah. That it is not 
not our doing. And this is like solid Lutheran theology, right? It's nothing that we can do. It's nothing that we do, nothing that we can do, nothing that we should do, nothing in it, nothing, nothing, nothing about us. It's all about what God is up to, what God has done, what God will do, what God is continuing to do um, to bring us to God through Christ. Um, it is the beautiful epitome of Luther's explanation, the third article of the Creed. Oh, I wish I had to pull that because I love pulling it out. I was going to do it last week and I didn't, and now I have regrets. And so two weeks in a row of opportunities. I believe, this is what Luther wrote, I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe. I believe that I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, but instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, and kept me in the true faith, just as the Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. That is it, right there. That the Spirit, that God drags us to faith. I mean, draws mm -hmm. us to faith, but drags us to faith, Okay. I wanted to focus on that word in particular because we get this section again about bread. And I cannot remember, I may have mentioned this a little bit in Bible study last week, but whenever, especially in John, whenever we see Jesus do something miraculous, it always has two purposes. The first purpose is to rectify a human need. And the second purpose is to reveal who Jesus is. All right, so here we have the, the feeding of the 5,000, right? The miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. Feeding people, right? Rectifying a human need. People are hungry, human hungry, human fed, okay? Rectify human need. And the second is to reveal who he is. And that's where we get this lecture for the rest of John about who Jesus really is and, and how the feeding reveals who Jesus is. Um and that, that Jesus is constantly pointing to this fact that he is the bread of life and that it is God always who is providing for the people. God gives bread, whether that's manna in the wilderness or cake on the side of a mountain or feeding the 5,000. And then God gives faith, right? So a human need and a revelation of who God is in Jesus Christ. God gives bread, God gives faith. God gives water, God gives faith. Living water, living bread, faith, right? Um, I love what you had to say, Pastor Rebecca, about um, Elijah being nourished um, by cake from God uh, for the sake of the world, right? There's this, this idea both in the <laughs> psalm and in 1 Kings that, um, that it doesn't just end right, with the story, that the story goes on and on and on and on, and Elijah goes on to do many and various other things. We get a little bit of that at the end of our reading today, um, but it just continues. The story just goes and goes and goes, um, and it's this reminder to go and do, right, that the bread of life, the bread that literally fills our stomachs, and the bread of life that is God in revelation to us is to, to send us into the world to do more and more things that we are nourished for the sake of our neighbor, um, not just for the sake of filling our own bellies, uh, which give, gets right into that psalm um, to taste it, right? To, to taste and see that God is good, but to, to taste it, to, to actually do the thing, right? Uh, to try it, to do it, to experience it, um, to, what did you say, Pat? Jules, I wrote it down, to experience the goodness and the grace of God. Um, I like that. So we have another week of all these texts kind of being connected together. And, and there are a ton of wonderful things in this text about the great I am verses and um, probably a ton more stuff about bread and things like that. But that's where I wanted to focus today because I love that word. A puse. Well, thank you. Drug, drug by God. Um, sometimes kicking and screaming <laughs> to what the spirit is up to in the world. Elijah would understand. Elijah would understand, right? 
Yeah, he had to go to a mountain to get away and take a nap. Man. It's a bad day right there. Sometimes I wish that I had a mountain to go to to take a nap. And then I woke up. You'd want that particular mountain. Well, no, but there was cake. And that sounds good to me. Yeah, but then the 40 days run. (laughs) That's true. I'm not about that. That's not going to happen. I was thinking, Rebecca, about that um, that passage as it as it relates to like the Hobbit and how the elves had oh. that really fancy cake that they would eat. Oh, and I can't bread. remember. Lambas bread. Yes. And that's, yes. and that's what I figured mana was. But yeah. here we've got even a richer cake. Nice, Jules. Thank you. <laughs> a tiny morsel will keep you going for many days. But also, I would like to eat seven of them. <laughs> well, it is a good number. Yeah, it's a good solid number. Yeah, thank right. you for that word. I've never noticed that word before. Thank you so much. You are welcome. I was introduced to it by the Reverend Doctor Richard Swanson. So, oh, it was delight. Okay. Um, anything else for study today? I think we just have a couple of announcements. Yeah, I don't know of anything else I need. Um, a reminder, well, first of all, thank you, because by the time you watch this on Thursday, we will have finished with Vacation Bible School for the year. Mm-hmm. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all the ways that you have given back and helped out with all the VBS stuff this year. It was a blast. We had a good time. Um, a reminder that if uh, you have kids or grandkids or nieces or nephews or anybody who falls in the age range of like zero to 18, there are many, many things that you can sign up for for programming for this fall, particularly Seeds of Faith and Confirmation. Uh, So hop on over to the website and sign up. That would be great. Uh, We will be kicking off fall programming at the end of September. So come and be a part of that. That'd be awesome. Uh, Pastor Jules will be leading some stuff on Wednesday night still. And uh, I mean, we'll figure things out as we go. Yeah, we'll have circle time for the next couple of Wednesday nights, which is like talking about random topics like what elves eat in the woods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> things like that. Very, very important things. And uh, I will, I'm going to throw a teaser out there. This fall on Wednesday nights, while Seeds of Faith is going on and Confirmation is going on, <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, teaching a class on boundaries. Oh, gosh. Like everybody needs good boundaries and like, how do we get them? And so I'm going to be using a book by Terry Cole called Boundary Boss. So you might want to get your copy now, start (laughs) studying it because it's going to be awesome. And then we're also going to be offering a class on The Artist Way on Tuesday nights, which is going to be very fun. I'm looking forward to um, farming that out to some people that are loving to engage in their creative mind, either writing or painting or doing different things. Um, Otherwise, you know, we're just plugging along. We do have an announcement for this coming Sunday from our smart team. I'll let Tanner roll that out. Yeah, uh, many of you, some of you have probably seen this already if you haven't seen it on Facebook or gotten it forwarded, but uh, you all are aware of the fact that we are in the midst of quite the surge happening with the Delta variant in Minnesota. So we went from that happy mild label on the county map to moderate and then all of a sudden over the weekend up to sustain or not sustain what was it something bad mm-hmm. susceptible something bad. danger danger, danger. We, we moved into danger. the danger side of things um which isn't fun and so we um we have in following cdc guidelines like we have been for the last two years now um and theoretically probably before that as well on a variety of things, but specifically related to the pandemic. Um, We are uh, reinstituting the mask requirements for everyone um, now. So whether you are vaccinated or unvaccinated, uh, you will need to wear a mask when you come to the church. So for worship, for meetings, for groups, for organizations, if you're swinging by the office, drop something off, please wear a mask. There are masks available at both of the entrances, as well as hand sanitizer and all that fun stuff. Um, So please utilize those if you don't have one already. Um, We will continue to sing and worship. Uh, We're not going to tape off rows and we don't need to move back to the sign-in process or anything like that, but we do encourage you to 
Um, give yourself a little extra space. Uh, utilize the chairs over in Resurrection Hall as well. Um, and be sure to wear a mask on Sundays as we gather for worship. Hopefully this surge will tamp down sooner rather than later. Um, we'll keep a good close eye on all the numbers and let you know if anything changes, but just note that that is where we are at now. Um, also a reminder for anybody, uh, any of you who are part of the, the food ministries that happen here, uh, whether that's Fair for All or Senior Men's Lunch or Owls or anything like that, any of the groups that meet at All Saints, um, if you're doing a meal of any sort, we have extra guidelines to go with that. And if you need those, you can let uh, myself or Jules know, and we will get those to you. Um, they're not like complicated. They're just, they're just extra. So just note that. And uh, we'll do everything that we can to get this all done with as soon as possible. But for the sake of our neighbors and our staff and our fellow community folks, that's where we're at right now. So wear a mask. Please wear a mask. Thank you. Wear masks. Thanks for joining in here. And if you don't feel comfortable being in person and wearing a mask, you can always join us online at either our Facebook page or our YouTube page. And remember, if you're tired of screens, check out the podcast. Podcast contains this Bible study as well as the sermon. So keep staying connected. Uh, by the time you're watching this, there should be very likely will be uh, your second quarter statement and a cover letter with some information as well. So don't throw that in the recycle bin. Take it out, read it, and thank you, thank you, thank you for all the ways you give back to All Saints. We're very grateful. Absolutely, we are. Oh, and, and we're getting a new vicar. Yeah, yeah. that's happening very soon. So yes. that's when, fun. when does that happen? When is he coming? September. Okay. Read about it in your August newsletter. <laughs> Read your August newsletter. Yes, please do that. www.allsaintcg.org Flash newsletter. Probably Cheers. Next. All right, thanks all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.